and welcome to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. I am Brett Brookie. This is Rick Allen. Rick Allen. Rick That's the name they gave me. That's the name they gave you. Rick Allen. Rick Allen. I think they can run it together, Rick Allen. So it's been a bit. We've it's been, been bit. busy. But you know what? It's been a bit since we've done this. We've, it's been, we've been things, family, kids, spring break. I go to pick Brett up today. And he comes strolling out to the car, and I go look at his shirt, and I go, hmm. <laughs> Still on the same page. Still on the same uh, page. Same, same pants. <laughs> totally random. It's it's just like, kind of totally random. So we look like we're working at the Best Buy. Or we just something. Seen, we, we've seen yeah. a, a name tag. <laughs> yeah, so, anyways, we'll. Uh, so we went to Iman, which was great. Oh, fantastic! It was a car travel for us, which was awesome. It was right here in Orlando. We call those home games. <laughs> we had a home game. Yeah, that was fun. But it was funny because my wife's like, "What? Are, are you gonna help? You know, pick up the kids? Or are you gonna do this? Or do that?" And I was like, "Just pretend I'm in New York. Just pretend I'm in Orlando, but like I'm in New York. I'm at a conference. I just happen to sleep at home tonight. I'm just gonna sleep at home. But don't don't ask. <laughs> don't check when I come home. But well, that was that was good ish, decent time. So yeah, it was good. It was. Um, what'd you learn? Anything? Uh, I mean, I learned a lot. Uh, it, not a whole lot about. Notes in specific, but like accelerated IDC policies and stuff to do, like stuff with different apps like Prosper and just fun stuff from someone like that at the bar was he just was letting them roll. And I was like taking in all the knowledge. I was like, this is good. This is good. So yeah. I heard, uh, so they were talking about, you know, the, one of the topics that just about any time you go to any sort of note conference, defaulted or anything like that, it's always inventory. When the, Where's the NPL inventory coming? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, three years ago, four years ago, they were like, "Well, it's it's you know, it's got to come soon. We've got this, we've got that." And now it's been a bit of like, "Well, it's a slow moving process. It's a big train. It doesn't all just get rolling at once." My crystal balls in the shop. <laughs> I don't really. I did know. hear that one. Yeah, I don't really know. So it sounds like end of the year, but I no. Said more, I thought they said 2024. 2020, end of the year, 2024. Yeah, it's like a, that. So they said it's just a really slow moving process. Um, so who, who knows if, if, if that's, you know, if you're tuning in for the update on IMN, that's uh, one thing I did take away from it. Um, we had a great panel on technology and it's crazy to see how much technology is coming into the space. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, it's good, it's good, good stuff. Anything else? Got to see some, you know, some of the old warrior soldiers we get to hang out with. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Get, you got to go out and do a little bit more than I did. I had to. You had a dip, but me and Patrick uh, Franz had a fun time, we, you know, and then uh, it was good. But then by the second day, of course, I'm in, you know, you stick around till like noon and then whatever. Got to see JB Bayman, Chris, Chris Sebney, and a whole bunch of other people. It was, it was, it was a good yes. time. Yes, yes, we did. Um, so it was good. A lot of fun. Yeah, so one of the things. What's today? What do we have? So it's one of those topics that are kind of cliche, but it's like, you know, someone asked, you know, he was like trying to learn about notes and you know, it's like, but he's like, I learned best by understanding your experiences and what you know now to what you would have done differently if you were in my shoes starting out. Like from, you know, I can learn all I need to know about it. what is a note, what's a mortgage, all this, all this, the technical whatever stuff. But yeah. knowing all the stuff you know now years later, looking back, if you were to go back and start all over again Ooh. with the knowledge, what would you do differently? What, what hurdles would you start? First, or what would you avoid? You know, would you stick with strictly a certain yeah. strategy? I mean, I would. Okay. What would I do? The first thing I would do is I would start off the rip with professional servicing. <laughs> I didn't do that for the first year and a, uh, probably the first year and a half. We did wow. our own servicing, and by own, you know, it was like my own servicing. I mean. We, I don't even know. You were buying NPLs though, right? So yeah. We, we, <laughs> yeah. The servicing was being done. What? Like the loss mitigation, huh? Well, yeah. The yeah. loss mitigation, we did all that, which was great. And that's one thing I would always do is like, I would find a way that you could implement your own loss mitigation stuff. But on the servicing side, like that first year and a half, I didn't have any that I had to take to foreclosure. Right. Because had I had to go to foreclosure with any of those in the first year and a half, I didn't have servicing records. I mean, I had the, the, they would give me a spreadsheet when I would buy it and tell me, here's all the balances as of now. But 
I didn't have a, a spreadsheet that I was like monthly accounting. Okay, mm -hmm. they were one hundred and thirty-eight thousand in the hole last month. This month, there are one hundred and thirty-eight thousand eight hundred of them. I didn't have all that. Didn't you guys try to do your own servicing in the sense of like getting mortgage office? And we were gonna do it. We bought mortgage office. We were gonna do our own servicing as a way, more so just as a way to like kind of manage manage uh, investor funds and all that stuff and so we could have done it it was a it was a robust program and we were did you guys ever use it we used it a little bit but yeah. it was it was a lot so we, we just never used it and it basically i was like well we can sit here and do this and pay somebody to do this or we can just pay you know 65 dollars a month per loan to somebody and once you get to a certain you know if you got 10 loans it's uh if you get 100 loans you're like that's 6500 bucks a month it would make sense if they're not performing, you know, it would make sense to go ahead and use the mortgage office and have somebody do it. But there was, we just, we never really got into it. So I would just say, look, it's easier to use a professional service or let them handle it. That is like the thing I would go back and tell myself. I would say also don't, we were doing NPLs and having great success at it. Okay. We, were, we were having fantastic success at getting people to uh, sign the house over and I went through like two foreclosures it took just forever. I ran into a couple of borrowers who were just like, they didn't want to give the house up. And one of them was pretty savvy. And so we, at that time, got some education on the performing side and we started going into the performing side. I would still, and we kind of did a complete pivot. Um, Is this the one, this isn't the one out of or Tennessee, right? Kentucky. Well, that was one of them. That was definitely one of them. This one took like years and the guy went back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, there was there was a guy out of um I think it was it was St. Pete Beach or Clearwater. It was somewhere on the East Coast. It was a settlement house. What does that mean? Florida we have settlement, the foundation tracks, oh. like that kind of stuff. And it, 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 he had gotten um, insurance for it to remedy it. And we ended up working out a deal with him where he owed like four hundred grand. Oh jeez. And but we, we only were into it for like one fifty. And so we got him to pay us off at one eighty and then he held on to it for like I think twelve months and then turned around and sold it for like three thirty or three forty. So that was one where like the foreclosure we had to like stop it and restart the foreclosure and we were gonna be on the hook. Like he was suing us for wrongful for it was just it was a mess he was a savvy borrower mm. so another thing i would do is i would look at if there's a foreclosure already started i would i would look through the foreclosure file look through the foreclosure case have your attorney do it to kind of get an idea of what you're buying did you not no we would i mean we would look at foreclosure but i would look okay foreclosures already started where are they in the process like how far along are they was the extent I wasn't going through the legal files and saying, okay, did they file the proper motions or is this the proper X, Y, or Z? You know, there was, so there, there was um, one like that. Um, so that's what you would do first. Definitely servicing so far. You would Re read through the, f I would have somebody, if it's an NPL and there's enough juice on it, I would, I, I'm going to buy it and there's a foreclosure started. I am looking through that. And then I wouldn't just also, one other one I mentioned was, I wouldn't just say, okay, I'm just buying performing or I'm just buying this. I would have a, a main strategy, but I would also, um, the the foreclosure things are the ones that you can get deed and lose on. Those are nice because you can get you can get big chunks, right, right? right? You can get chunks of capital and you can have your performing stuff that's, that's coming in and, and paying the steady eddy bills, but the, the big chunks to keep them coming. Yeah, you can get them, the, the non-performing stuff, so. But ideally you should have, you should, you gotta caveat that too. If you're buying non-performing, you better have some kind of real estate background. Hmm. You better have a real estate background. Um, it, that helps. Um, at the time when we were buying the non-performing stuff and we're really, we were really, really, really successful, it's because we were all in Orlando, right? Or, or uh, in the surrounding uh, areas. It was, it was something that if I had to, and I, in at the first, at the beginning I did it, but, um, the further along we got, I stopped doing it. If I had to, I would drive to the people's house and talk to them. Right. There's one like over which no one's going to know where this is at, but East Orlando, right? We. Actually walked up to the door. Yeah. And he basically said, "I own your house. Here's a check for ten G's." I there was I met several several times. There was I think the biggest check we wrote was like 
twenty or twenty five thousand to somebody to get out. And they didn't want to get out, but we were like, look, I'm a foreclosure, I'm gonna give you twenty five grand, take your pick. And they took the twenty five grand and left. And we turned around and resold it like Immediately? Immediately. And how much did you make? Oh, uh, probably like eighty five, some eighty, eighty five grand on that. Um, Minus the twenty or is that No, no, that's our profit. Oh well, okay. That's why was, that's why you write a check, right? Yeah. I'm gonna write you a check for twenty five to make eighty, eighty five, something like that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. That was really good. Anyways, I, I would the, like I said, big chunks coming in. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Uh, another thing I would tell myself is, if it's a non-performing loan, be wary of the small balance stuff. Because legal fees are going to cost the same. No legal fees are going to cost the same, and if if it's in. You could have a fifty thousand dollar loan that's carrying four grand a year in taxes, mm. and if you're in the you know, you know Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, and which which that's fine as long as you're not holding it for too long. But think about it: if it's if, if it's a fifty thousand dollar loan and maybe the house is worth sixty thousand or seventy thousand, I mean that's a pretty healthy chunk of you know, mm -hmm. it's not quite ten percent, but it's you know, or, or it's it's a little over ten percent, under ten percent. Yeah, but it's it's still pretty. I mean, it's pretty hefty. It adds up, so that can kind of eat into your your cost quickly. And then I gotta tell you, I can't tell you how many houses that had basements I've had that flooded, and that is awful. That is like the to fix that. It's just it's a it'll kill you. It will kill you. So I have a rule for me that I'm not buying anything else that's small balance and has a basement. It has a basement. Just because. Why is it the basements always flood? They're underground. <laughs> well, that's just. <a> <laughs> yeah, I guess that. We live in Florida. We don't have a whole lot of basements. No. No, no we have walkouts. Walkout basements where there's a hill and they just dig out part of the hill and they build the house in the hill so you kind of are walking out one side. That's true. Or so, storage shooting. Storage shit. That's not a basement though. I guess you store stuff in there. It's like an extra garage. <laughs> Same kind of thing, right? What are you talking about? A storage unit thing. Not a storage unit. What do you, what do you, what do you The sheds. You put storage your, shed? Yeah, you put your uh, like, lawn mowers and yeah, stuff in. Yeah. yeah, but those are not underground. Yeah, I know. That's real above ground. I don't know. Not the same thing. All right, so you keep going. You, you have the servicing, hybrid approach of performing and non performing to keep you know the big, big wins and small little base hits. Servicing, going through foreclosure notes, making sure a lawyer reviews it or understanding how to read all that legal jargon. Mm -hmm. And then. Lastly, anything else? I'm, I'm waiting for you to say it. I know you're going to say it. What? Get some education. Well, get some education, of course. <laughs> I thought that was like a... Like, so the, on the education front, there's there's kind of two ways. Of, there's two schools of thought, right? Right. There's a school of hard knocks where I'm going to go in there and I'm going to figure it out, which... It costs a lot more money. money. <laughs> it, I mean, that's what we did the first year and a half, and we're very, we're very, very lucky. The, the time that we, we jumped into it, mm -hmm. stuff was selling at 10 cents on the dollar. Or twelve cents. You had a dollar. lot of. Literature. So you had a lot of cushion, right? Mm -hmm. If I was buying something, you know, I was buying two hundred and fifty thousand houses, or I was buying notes on houses worth two hundred fifty thousand, and I was buying them for one hundred and twenty or one hundred and ten. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I mean, literally like fifty cents on the dollar for the big stuff, the good like. Those are performing or not? Performing? Non performing, like the goods, man. Mm -hmm. I was paying fifty cents on the dollar for the goods back in 2012, 2013. Nice. So. There was a little more room for error, mm -hmm. and it was the times, like, things were, you know, things had been bad for so long, and people, the borrowers or the houses that we were buying, they knew. Yeah. They had been living with it for years. They knew. They're like, I haven't been paying my, they were just waiting, waiting, waiting. So when you get to them and you talk to them, you're like, hey, it, it's time. Right? Yeah. It's time. You so been we for had all seven the, years. we had all that kind of working for us. So you could afford to have you know the everything was just kind of a perfect storm. Now it's like you got to be you have to be measured in your steps. You have to be measured in your investments. Um, still great investments, but you have to have some education, right. right? It's just it's not the it's a different investment climate right now. So I would say get definitely get educated um, so you understand what you're doing. And, you know, I kind of, I maybe contradicted myself a little bit because I'm like, pick a strategy and go with it. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that. If you're, if you're new to notes, you should have that. Just this is my strategy. 
but one of the things I've always looked at is I'm always like, if everybody's buying MPL, then I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna shift my I'll buy some performing. If if people start shifting over to performing, like I'm looking for the MPL stuff. I'm trying to fish where nobody else is. That's smart. So that's that's one of the things I would I would say. You know, yes, pick a strategy, but also once you're seasoned a little bit and you can kind of see opportunity, don't don't be afraid to take an opportunity if you can execute. Interesting. Okay, cool. So, so that's a good list. So we got. Servicing, yeah. foreclosure, education, opportunity cost of going one direction over the other, and having a hybrid <coughs> approach. Some performing, some not performing, judicial, non judicial. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. There's, I, I'm sure you missed stuff and you paraphrased wrong, but it's good. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. We had, uh, it was funny kind of tying this up, but wrapping on that. I, had, I was at uh, my daughter's softball tournament where I was watching one of our other our 12U program play mm -hmm. and one of the guys I was talking to one of the guys there and he's a buddy of mine um, he's from Claremont Brandon and he was uh, we were sitting there just talking and we were talking about something with um, a discount card or something like that and he goes ah oh, you guys should talk about that on your next podcast I'm like what do you podcast how do you know I have a podcast he's like oh I listen to it all the time he's like you guys you guys have such a good flow you guys can talk about the traffic and and I would listen. He goes, it's like, you guys just, it's perfect the way you guys work together. I was like, man, that's like the best compliment I've had. I was like, you know, it's like, hey, you could talk about the traffic and I would listen. It was pretty like, cool. That's, it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, we, we flow so well, we wear the same clothes. Didn't even plan it. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't even know you had that, that color but shirt. Gonna, we're, you know, we normally just, I don't want to spoil it for you, but sometimes we record two of these in one day or three of these. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to change. <laughs> Uh, and, hey, let us know if you'd like a salmon-colored shirt. We have several of them we can give out. Salmon. It was supposed to be orange. It looked more orange on the website when I ordered it, and it showed up with the salmon. It looks like like perfect salmon. It says salmon. I think it said... No, it's, it didn't say salmon. It said something else. But it looked orange. Maybe it was just my screen resolution, but... I've done that before, too, when I ordered stickers. <laughs> I ordered stickers. I thought, you know, the screen, they were like... They were this big. <laughs> this big. You couldn't... Like you couldn't read them, but they're perfect. They're like actually like the perfect um, like graffiti stickers or whatever. Because you could run and just I would just put them on people's like my friends' cars. I'd like bumper sticker them, and then and and they would never. It would just sit there forever because they wouldn't see it. And I would go to gas pumps. I'd put you papers. Put oh yeah, I was everywhere. That's funny. Yeah. Because we had a bunch of stacks of them. Yeah, we had a bunch of. <laughs> I mean, we had a lot. We probably had what five hundred of these things that were just like this big and that big, and they just said paper stack on them. Yeah, I, I just the funniest part was Mike's reaction when he when he saw what I ordered and when I got, we got it in, he was like, "What's it?" <laughs> <laughs> they were so small. I mean, it looked big. I mean, maybe my again, like, you know, maybe my screen resolution, right? We had it zoomed in too far. I don't know. I should. I probably shouldn't have looked at the dimensions, but. I wasn't paying attention. Details, Brett. Details. Those details, yeah. Anyways, so, well, that's coming it. up soon is we're going to have Ooh. DME. DME, yes. I won't be there, but Brett and Mike will be in Nashville. Nashville. Mm -hmm. Smashville. I'm, I'm not really jealous about that. Yeah, I uh, talked to Nathan. It's not too far from the main strip, I guess. So. Um, yeah, it's not. I think it's like a, a 15, 20 minute ride to yeah. get there. Maybe less. I don't know. I'll be. It's in June, right? It's in June, like second or third. There's the night before. There's an axe throwing competition. Dude, I, w I would come there and just smoke it at that. I'm so I'm so jealous. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can find it at you just uh, diversified mortgage expo. We'll put a link to it in, in, the, the, in the comments. Yep, in the show notes. In the show notes. But yeah. So uh, again, like always, if you have your own questions and I'll be at a concert. It's a four day. Oh, that okay. That Gulf concert. Coast Jam concert in Panama City Beach. Yeah, you always so, do that. Yeah, uh, normally I would go to the other one they had, which was Sand Jam, which was kind of like the uh, late '90s, early 2000s alternative punk, uh, alternative rock bands would be there. So mm -hmm. the guys that are like getting older now, they're they would go and play. But that kind of it was doing good, and then COVID hit. But now like the Gulf Coast is going to be Morgan Wallen. It's just all country, but it's going to be it's going to be good. That's cool. It's going to be real good. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, well, we're going to have fun without you. You know, we'll have some barbecue without you. Yeah. So we listen to some live music. Listen to some live music. Uh, maybe go ride on a boat. I mean, it's only a couple of days, so. Ride on a boat. Well, they have the river there, right? Yeah. I don't they have like the 
Big boat. I don't know. If I go to Nashville, I wouldn't be like, hey, I'm like, oh, I guess a riverboat is what you're riverboat, calling Riverboat, riverboat cruise or something? Yeah, cool. I don't know. Probably not. I, I always have great ideas, and then we get there, and I just do, I don't do any of them. So, but that's that for this one. If you are looking for education, of course, you know where to find some in the Paper Sec Academy, which is linked below. And if you have a topic you want to cover, he will answer it, and I will listen. So, that's it for this episode. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thanks.